All right, so today we are going to set up LunaVim. LunaVim is a NeoVim distribution, even though it's designed specifically for development, no one is stopping you from using it for some regular editing stuff. All right, before we start the tutorial, I have to warn you about few things. Getting used to Vim style of editing is not easy. So, if you are planning to jump right into Vim or NeoVim headfirst, I highly recommend you to try out a Vim plugin in the editor you are using right now instead of jumping right in. Because it's going to be hard and after some time you are going to get tired and you will leave Vim or NeoVim forever. Using a Vim plugin is a great way to build your muscle memory at the same time keeping your productivity at a good level. So VS Code has a Vim plugin, Intel JID's got Vim plugins, and even Eclipse has a Vim plugin. Some IDs got uh, built-in support for Vim editor like Qt Creator, I think that's called. Um, so yeah, try a Vim plugin first, then jump to Vim or Nia Vim. All right, since all that is out of the way, head on to lunavim.org and smash that install button as shown in the prerequisites section we have to install some packages to get LunaVim working i will start by installing neovim 0.8.0 so click on the link scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page under assets section we have a bunch of files if you are someone like me using debian or debian based distribution then you can use .deb package to install NeoVim. But just because NeoVim Linux 64 is somewhat universal to all Linux distributions, I'll be using that package instead. However, if you're using Debian, Ubuntu, Linux Mint, or something like PopOS, then it's better to use the deb file because you're going to get updates in the future as well. So you don't have to reinstall anything once again once there is an update so this is better but i'll be using the tar gc file instead just click on the file to download it when it's done go to the downloads folder you can right click on the tar file and click extract here once it's completed you can go to home directory and hit ctrl h to show hidden files go into dot local directory go into share and you can copy the extracted directory to share directory all right now there is an executable called nbim inside the directory you just copied however linux knows nothing about that executable to tell linux that there is a binary called nbim i'm going to head on to dot local directory and make sure there is a bin directory inside .local. If not, you can create one. After that, we will navigate into the directory we just copied. Inside there, you will find a bin directory. Inside that, you will find nvim executable. Next, we are going to create a symbolic link to this nvim executable at .local bin directory. For that, I will be copying the path to this directory we are in using control L that will show the path in text mode. Copy that. Open up a terminal window, type ln s to create a symbolic link. Then paste in the path you just copied. We are going to create a symbolic link to the nvim executable. So you have to append forward slash nvim to the path you just pasted into the console and the destination is going to be dot local bin directory in your home directory okay next run nvim command in the console it should work unless you have to create a bin directory inside dot local in that case the command will fail saying command nvim not found well don't worry all you have to do is log out and log into your system again just to give you an understanding why that's happening 
there is a dot profile file or a executable that contains some script that will be ran every single time you log in to your system now it checks if there is a bin directory inside dot local if there is a directory it will add that particular path to the path environment variable if it does not exist however it is not going to do anything so if you had no directory in there then most likely the nvim command will fail because the path is not included in the path environment variable To verify that you have installed nvim correctly, you can run nvim in a terminal window once again. This time it should open up NeoVim. To quit the editor, you can type colon Q. However, if you have edited the buffer in some way, the editor will not allow you to quit. In that case, you can type colon Q and bang sign, then hit enter to quit NeoVim. With that step, we have installed NeoVim. Next, we are going to install some packages using apt package manager. Before that, we are going to update the apt cache using sudo apt update command. You may have to type y to accept the changes. So hit y and hit enter to accept the changes. Once that is completed, we are going to install git make pip. By the way, we are going to install pip for Python 3 and the package name on Ubuntu is Python 3 pip. Then we are going to install cargo as well. Next, let's install npm and node.js. The package provided by official website node.js.org will contain npm as well as node.js runtime both. So let's hop on to web browser and go to node.js dot org the official website and download the packages for linux 64 like we did earlier i'm going to extract the package and i will move that extracted directory to dot local share directory and once again we are going to create symbolic links to these executables inside the directory we just extracted at dot local bin since you have the path to dot local bin in the path environment variable already you don't have to log out and log in again you can run node version to make sure you have installed node.js successfully same way let's run npm version as well to make sure npm is also working all right finally we are going to install lunavim i'll just copy the script in the documentation and run it and there is an error apparently curl is not pre-installed on ubuntu so i'll have to manually install that so run sudo apt install curl once again let's try the lunavim installation script Okay, the script is going to ask you some yes or no questions. I highly recommend you installing all the LunaVim dependencies. First, it's going to ask for your permission to install Node.js dependencies. Say yes. Next, we have Python dependencies. Once again, say yes. For one last time, it will prompt you to get the permission to install Rust dependencies. By the end of the script, it will suggest you to install a font that supports icons. So we're going to go to NerdFonts and pick a font from there and install. So go to nerdfonts.com and click Downloads. You can pick any font from here, but I'm going to pick Cascadia code. The name is kind of different. I believe that's due to some legal reasons or something. I don't know. Click download, extract the font you just downloaded. I'm going to move the entire directory 
to a directory inside home directory called dot fonts if there is no an existing folder you can create a new one To update the font cache, I'll run fc cache f. Next, let's select the font we just installed in the terminal. Okay, now we can fire up LunarVim using lvim command. Bottom of the screen you can see it's trying to install some tree sitter parsers initially. That's how you're going to get syntax highlighting and all that stuff. Just wait for it to complete and then you can hit Q to exit. Just to test this out, I have cloned a React application, a sample React application to my local machine. Let's run Elvim in this directory. One nice thing about Elvim is if it finds the current directory to be a project it's going to add it to the project list automatically so the next time when you fire up Elvim you can hit P key to select the previous project you have opened up earlier you can hit space key or the leader key well leader key is a placeholder that's mapped to space key so hit space key once then it will bring up a menu of uh, key binds that, that's available for you here I'm going to select E for Explorer by the way the menu you see here is done through a plugin called which key and it takes around like two seconds to show up that's how it's configured in Elvim however you don't have to wait for it to um, do the key bind if you know it already you can just hit the key bind really fast for example to open up explorer you can hit space e right away but if you don't remember it you can just wait two seconds and see what key bind you have to press to get to uh, wherever you want okay now let's open up a file okay when i open up app.tsx file you can see uh, in the in the screen below it says installing in progress for ts ever and tailwind css so that's how actually NeoVim fire up a language server. That's how we get like auto completion and errors and all that stuff. Um, we are running a headless language server separately and provide those features in the editor itself. And unlike other IDEs like Eclipse or um, IntelliJ, we are not going to load everything in the beginning. We are only going to load language servers when we are firing up a file so until that um, we will we will not have any language servers that's how nvim starts up really really fast within like 100 milliseconds or less than that and um, we only start up a language server only we, when we need to you can just hit enter to ignore the message and open the file now if you want to check the status of the language server installation you can hit colon to start a command and type mason then hit enter um, m has to be capital and it will open up this um, pop-up window in which you can see installed servers if not um, if it is being installed at the moment then it will show a, a installing section and you can see uh, a language server being installed and the progress there in that section okay now let's see if the auto completion works in this project okay the auto completion works beautifully out of the box okay let's see if the code formatting works i will screw up some indentation and let's see how long it takes you know if you are using prettier the the executable it's going to take some time but if you're using something like prettier d or something else then Probably it's faster than that. Let's see how long it takes um, whether it's instant or we can see the you know change uh, Or delay between key bind and the actual code formatting Okay, that's instant. I believe it's not prettier All right, I'll stop here and let you explore 
Lunarim yourself. Now if you need some help to figure out how to do something then a good place to ask those questions would be um, Lunarim subreddit but if you find an issue and you want to report it go to um, Lunarim github page and create an issue there. So yeah this is pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day.